All right, so today we're gonna go over for sale by owner prospecting. So for sale by owners are what? Fizbo. Fizbo. <laughs> They're people that are trying to sell their property by owner, right? So, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I used to work at a law firm and there's this one really sweet little girl there and she looked at me and she said, so for the Fizbo, who's, who's the um, seller's agent? There is no agent. I always think of that right. when I say this, but. Right. So why do people sell by owner then? They why try to save it? money by not paying out a commission. Trying to save money by not paying a commission. Why else? They may have had a bad experience with a previous real estate agent. Bad experience, they don't trust realtors, right? Why else? Maybe they're trying to do something illegal. <laughs> okay, like yeah, yeah. They might want to, they might want to uh, not, not disclose something that they know a realtor is going to make them disclose. Sure, sure, that that could happen. That that is a piece of the puzzle. Sure. They don't know a real estate agent. And they're waiting for somebody to come. Ah, uh, yes, that is a small piece. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they just don't know who else to to use, and so they just figure putting a for sale by owner sign will get them in touch with some agents. That does happen. Yeah. They think they know, right? How they do it too. Yeah, and yeah, and then the other, the fifth one would at least. They just want to try it. They're not. They'd like to save the money, sure, but they just they just think they can do it. They want to try it. They think it's fun, um, and so that's, that's the other piece of the puzzle. Okay. But the number number one and number two reasons by far are they want to save money and they had a bad experience and they don't trust realtors. Okay. So those are the big things you're going to have to overcome typically when you do for sale by owner prospecting. All right. So here's some statistics though. Is it overcomable? If that's a word. Can you overcome it? Um, the answer is absolutely yes, because the national statistics year after year actually keep going up. But then even in, in 2018, uh, of all the for sale by owner data that we have out there, over 80% ended up listing with the real estate agent. Over 80%. So only 20%-ish end up selling themselves. But what do you think the public opinion is? What do you think the for sale by owner opinion is? Uh, getting a deal undercut them. Yeah, the, I, I guarantee if you were to poll for sale by owners, they would say something like, oh, I mean, 80, 90% sell themselves, right? And 20% list with the realtor, right? But it's not true. And the reason why, I, I think, this is my own opinion, but I think the reason why is because nobody ever tells you the bad stories. They only tell you the good stories. See Facebook, right? So for sale by owners, if they sell it themselves, they had a good experience and everything went great, they're gonna post that all over social media. They're gonna talk about it with all their friends. Oh, it was easy, it was no problem. I didn't need no realtors. I just sold it all myself, no problem. But they never wanna brag or tell you about the stories when they went under contract with the buyer and the buyer came in with an inspector and knocked holes in the wall and then backed out on them. Like they never wanna tell you these horrific stories. Or we get to closing and then we find out there's a legal issue and then I got sued by the buyer. Like, and this stuff is real and happens, uh, and nobody ever tells you those stories, okay? Mm -hmm. But in general, the national statistics are 80% will list with a realtor. So as realtors, and we're looking for listings left and right, that's our bread and butter, um, we, we spend a lot of time and energy and money trying to figure out who it is that wants to sell. Well, for sale by owners have their hand raised saying, I want to sell, and I don't have an agent. And the problem is, of course, they have their other hand raised saying, I don't want to list the deal. All right, so that's the problem. So we're going to talk about how we overcome that stuff, all right? So the easy rule to remember for sale by owners is that is a courting relationship. It is a long-term, you got to date them for a while before they will let you in, okay? So you got, you got to take your time with them. They're not a meeting with them once, they're gonna list with you kind of a thing. It's just not gonna happen, all right? So it's a long-term process. You gotta keep that in mind. The number of uh, weeks to sell is typically about four weeks for for sale by owner. It takes them about four weeks. For the ones that do sell, it takes them about four weeks. For the ones that list, it takes them about six to eight weeks nationally. About six to eight weeks before their heart breaks and they decide, ah, just can't do it, I need to hire a realtor, all right? So that keeps you, if, if, if that listing goes on the market today 
and you start talking to them, you should expect to be talking to them for six to eight weeks before they're finally ready to listen. Sometimes there'll be less, sometimes there'll be more, but that's kind of the average. All right. How often during that six to eight weeks should you be talking? Yeah, I'm going to recommend weekly. Weekly conversations with them in person, if at all possible, but uh, weekly conversations at least. At least. Now, when this for sale by owner comes up, on average, national statistic, how many for, how many agents? talk to that for sale by owner. How many do you think? Eight. Eight is exactly right. Eight agents typically will talk to a for sale by owner, okay? How many of those eight agents return for even a second time? Two. You've been looking in the book. Oh, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second. <laughs> two of the eight agents yeah. uh, will return more than once, okay? So what does that tell you? If, if, they're, if the people aren't ready to list, when they go talk to them and you don't return, your chances of picking them up as a client are, are slim to none, right? So you've got to keep following up. And we also know that the biggest reason for sale by owners say, yeah, I listed with so-and-so is follow-up. They cite that, well, that agent kept following up with me. They were helpful to me. So I figured when I was finally ready to list, I would go ahead and list with them. I missed one um, that I followed up with and it was ended up with said they went with them because they had been following up about two weeks more than I have. Ah, yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, proves the point though, right? So there's three things you do not want to do when for sale of any owner prospect. Okay, so these are the nots. First one is try not to list on the first visit. Don't list on the first try. Okay, again, it's a courting relationship. You're going to have to date them for a while. So to Rick's point, there is a small percentage of for sale by owners that put the sign in the yard and are just waiting for an agent to come talk to them. And then as soon as they do that, like, great, come on in, let's talk about listing. It happens. Now, one way to spot those people is how much money they spent on their for sale by owner sign. If it's a cardboard sign that's written in marker for sale by owner, that person might be ready to list with you right now because they spent no money on the sign and they just wanted to see who would show up. Now, if somebody put in a $100 sign and you can tell they've got brochures that they made and all this stuff, eh, they're probably pretty committed to being a for sale by owner. Doesn't mean you don't talk to them, it just means you know they're gonna be more committed. So just, when, my, my honest instinct was when I went to a for sale by owner when I first started, when they had those bad signs, I didn't wanna talk to them because like, this guy's gonna be a jerk, you know, they don't. They don't even care about the sign. How are they going to care about their house? And, you know, I learned the hard way that those are the ones that list with you right away. So when you see that, go after those people for sure. But don't try to list on the first try. Okay. Um, you also do not want to sell all of your services. Don't give them everything right away. Okay. You're going to kind of drip campaign them on the services and things that we're doing. All right, so don't sell everything all at once. Don't give them all your services. And what's the biggest thing that they want from you is what? What do you think they want to get from you? Information about what? How to do it. How to do it? No. I just what their home is worth. What their home is worth, the price, exactly. So that's the one thing we never give them. Okay, never give a sale by owner your opinion of their price. Unless. And let's say that you do a listing presentation. Exactly right. So I'm fully willing to give it for sale by owner, uh, a full pricing opinion, PTA, put in the effort, put in the work to give them a full pricing opinion if they're willing to sit with me and go through a marketing presentation. I think that's fair. Let's see, I, I hear you, Aaron, but I'm not ready to list. I'm not going to list with you. That's cool. But I, I need some practice anyway. I wouldn't mind talking with you, sharing with you some ideas. If nothing else, you can take my marketing ideas, do them, go do them yourself. They're not gonna do that, but um, yeah. I mean, you give them some ideas and then, uh, that way you've heard my marketing plan for your house. And then if you let me do that, I will be happy to give you my pricing opinion. For a lot of for sale buyers are like, okay, sure, that's fair. So just like we do a normal listing presentation, we sit down, we show them, hey, I've got your pricing information here. Let's go through the marketing plan that I would do for you if you chose to hire me. And here's how we can come to that price and then share that with them, okay? So that's the only reason we wouldn't give it to them is if they gave us that listing appointment, okay? 
Um, and the third thing you don't want to do is discourage the seller. Always positive. Uh, I have some strong opinions about some for sale by owner. Sometimes I get it. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, try it for yourself. I get it. It's fine. Other times I'm like, you're an idiot for trying to sell by owner. You know, and so statistically, I know it's not in their best interest. I know that. I know it's not in their best interest statistically to sell by owner. So, um, you, but you never want to discourage them. You never want to bring those points up. You just want to uh, talk to them, explain to them what maybe you think you could do to help, but not discouraging them um, for, for making that decision. Okay? Yeah. Do you ever have any situations where that you you do get to do a doors presentation and they have it for sale for under, for example, 350,000, but after you do the door presentation, it's only worth 315, 320. And how do you bridge that gap with them and they're saying, oh my goodness, you're saying my house only worth 315, I believe I can get 350 out of it. Mm -hmm. so how do you-, how do you Well, that's, that's a tough conversation, no doubt. Uh, it's a different conversation, but um, that, that you're just gonna have to be able to prove with the market data of why it's only worth 315, 320. And then in that case, I would warn them, encouragingly warn them that this is what the buyers are saying. And so I understand if you don't, if you're not happy with this, I get it, but this is what the market is saying. And unfortunately, I'm not doing you any favors if I just lie to you and tell you, hey, yeah, we can get 350, but I think it's worth 315. But this is what you're realistically looking at. At least you feel good about yourself. I mean, here's here's what you do. But in a situation like that, you're probably not going to get that listing right away. You may not ever get it, but they're probably never going to sell it either until the market catches up to maybe the price they want. Would you bring up even if you did find a buyer at three fifty, if it weren't appraised at that, then they've got to come up with that extra money, or the bank will say no. Yeah, absolutely. And they're yeah. going to that's time lost off the market. Yep. Um, Absolutely. That's an excellent point. Excellent point. But that All right. So your first step, the first visit to a for sale by owner uh, should be in person. A couple of different ideas, experiences I'll share with you. One idea that I really like, because a for sale by owner sometimes has some ice in front of them, right? And you got to break through that to actually talk to the person. So one way to get around that, I think, is to park where they can see your car, leave your car running, leave the door open, and park so like you can tell, like, okay, they're, they're, they're trying to go here. Um, and you walk up to the door, you ring the doorbell, and take a step back, all right? Because you don't want to be forcing your way in, just psychologically, they're just naturally gonna push back, right? So if you kind of take a step back, when they come to the door, like, hey, I'm Aaron Craft, Larger like Realtors Unlimited. Um, I, I'm on my way to another appointment, but I saw your sale by owner sign. I just wanted to know what your price was. And they say, yeah, it's 330. Oh, wonderful. I'd love to take a look at it sometime. Would, would maybe tomorrow work for you, two or four o'clock? Boom, right to the point. And then I go, oh, wait, 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 wait. Are you interested? Like, they're going to try to pull you in. And if that happens, okay, but you're on your way to an appointment. So I'm making an appointment to come back tomorrow, two o'clock. Okay, great, I'll see you then. Here, here's my business card to see you. That's all it needs to be. And the whole time I'm walking away from them. And that's the law of attraction. That works perfectly well. I did that. Yeah. It, it did exactly what People did. want to pull you back. It's the law of attraction. If, if I'm trying to force my way in, they're like, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. But if you're pulling away from them, they're like, oh, come here, come here, come here. So that's one good idea because it immediately disarms them as far as you forcing your way in. And really you just did force your way in. This is going to be tomorrow. Okay. So that's one, one quick way to do it. Um, uh, another thing, is, you know, if you, if you, you can do it that way or you can just try to have a nonchalant conversation, not trying to force your way in, but just saying, um, just curious about what you're asking for your property. Well, I'm not listed with any realtor. I understand you're for sale by owner. I get it, no problem. But I just wanted to know what's going on in the market. It's my job to understand what's up, open on the market for my buyers. I just wanted to find out from you, um, you know, what your price is, what your bedroom baths are, etc. cetera. Uh, okay, yeah, and, you know, if you have time for a tour, I'd love to just take a quick look around. Like, okay, and just try to get your way in and kind of have that conversation. Never ever talking about listing the property unless they bring it up. They're like, well, would you be interested in listing it? 
yes. <laughs> but if they don't say that, don't don't bring the conversation around that way uh, unless they bring it up. Okay. Um, so every, everything's nice and happy. If they say, hey, do you, well, do you have a buyer for my house? If you do, well, great, say that. But if you don't, you probably won't right away. Um, say, well, you know, gosh, I'd like to take a look. I, I, don't, I don't think so right now. I mean, but just be honest. You know, you don't have to lie about it. By the way, when I said I'm on my way to an appointment, let's say my appointment is just to go home and grab a beer. Is that an appointment? Yeah. Yeah. I see that. No, I don't it is. So I'm perfectly comfortable with that. If you feel like that's too shady, fine. I'm perfectly comfortable with it because I am on my way to an appointment. If my appointment's a week from now, I'm still on my way to an appointment. So that's how I personally am fine with that ethical issue. <laughs> if, if you're okay with that, all right? Um, okay, so then what I'm gonna recommend as, a, as your for sale by owner plan is to be stopping by or talking with them weekly. So how many for sale by owners will you commit to talking to weekly? Is it every for sale by owner in town? <laughs> no, okay, it's not gonna be. So here's two things that I did that I think work really well. One, find a number that works. I would recommend three. If you wanna move up to five, that's a good number. But starting with three is a good, easy number to remember. It's easy to work with. It's more than one, you know, so it's a real commitment level on, on for sale by owner prospecting, but it's not gonna kill your week. It's gonna take an hour or two, depending on how far apart your for sale by owners are. Try to find for sale by owners that are on your normal route. So in other words, if you live up in Mars Hill, find Mars Hill for sale by owners, or ones on the way down to the office or wherever else you might go in normal life. The gym, you know, wherever you're going, wherever you find them, right? So you don't wanna drive all over town. You don't wanna go down to Flat Rock to do a for sale by owner and then go to Black Mountain and then Weaverville. It just doesn't make sense, okay? Because ideally you wanna be stopping by in person. So the other thing that does is if you commit to say three for sale by owners consistently until you get one of them listed, um, that gives you freedom to feel good about yourself. So if you have three, you say, I'm doing three, I've got my three, and then you, you're driving down the road and you see another one, you still might wanna stop and take a quick picture of it just in case one of yours goes away, but you can feel good about yourself driving by and say, oh, there's one, but oh, I already got my three, I'm good. And you don't feel guilty. Because for me, when I started doing this, I started feeling really guilty. I want to prospect, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And then I'm driving by all these for sale by owners and I'm, I'm busy, I'm do doing things. I feel guilty, I'm not stopping. Oh, Aaron, you should do that one, you should do that one, you should do that one. And all of a sudden, you're, you're just putting too much pressure on yourself. So I ended up finally saying, no, I'm gonna do a certain number. That's what I'm working with, that's what I'm doing. And then when one of those people sells their house, great, congratulations. I'm gonna put another one in, or they list with me, great, wonderful, but I, now I only have two, I need to put another one in. Or they list with someone else, great, congratulations, good luck, and then, um, you know, and then we have to replace them. Does that make sense? So ultimately, building that up to maybe 10 or so, if, you, if that's really, if this is a major focus for you on prospecting, is it, you know, you can do that, you can do it to 10 or something like that. Um, but three is a good starting point. That's, that's good prospect. You're going to pick up listings this year if you, if you keep three going consistently. Okay. So again, like the, I said, though, the idea is to stick with them until they die. They list with you, they list with someone else, or they sell it themselves. Or cease and desist. Or they give you a cease and desist letter. Then, then you can give them up. Right? And that, that's a good point, though. If you go there for sale by owner, there's going to be some ice. They're not going to be super friendly sometimes. And usually that starts breaking up as you start talking to them. But if you really just have a personality clash and you're not enjoying talking to them, you don't like them, well, dump them. Find someone else, replace them. Okay. Don't let them bring you down on that. There's always gonna be for sale by owners. There's tons of them out there, so um, it's not gonna be hard to find them, all right? So what are, what are some ways to find for sale by owners? Zillow. Zillow, Zillow is one way. Yeah, you can find them on there. Um, still find some classified ads out there. Um, 
ForSaleByOwner.com, uh, Pismo.com, ByOwner.com, Craigslist. Yeah, How else? I use all those. Drive bys, right? Just and you know, we all have cameras now on our phones, so drive by and, and all you do is take snap a picture of, uh, of of the sign in front of the house and take a picture of the street. Mm -hmm. That's a mistake I've made. Like, I got this picture. I don't know where I was. <laughs> you know, so take a picture of the address of it or write it down or whatever. But um, if you don't have time, again, best thing to do is just stop there right now. It's going to take you five minutes. Make a quick contact and move on. But snap a quick picture. The drive-bys is probably the best way to still find them. Okay. Is that FizzboFreedom.com? Is that just a listing service? Because I noticed now, I know he told me, my Fizbo, um used that to put it on the MLS, but I noticed there's also a sign in his yard now that says save for sale by owner. It's the for sale by owner freedom. Mm -hmm. Like it's their sign. But is that a limited services thing or is it just basically listing well, I don't know for sure, but there are a lot of those sites that have a package deal. Like you pay them a hundred bucks, you get on their website, they send you a sign, they get you this, they get you that. There's a lot of those things, but I don't think they're limited service. I don't think they're actually getting you on the MLS. They're just a listing. Yeah. Okay. I, I used all of those, but I've been finding lately the Zillow has like the most for sale by owners that I've been able to find. Because yeah. people are thinking that, like, if I'm going to put my house on, online, I'll put it on Zillow because that's the first place to look. I mean, they have the largest advertising campaign. I mean, it's in the billion. You can't stand them, but it's exactly. So, it, too. Um, yeah, so that, you know. What was, I, I read a thing that said, uh, the A in Zillow is for accuracy. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yep. Um, okay, so yeah, just just find, find your three, find your five. That's what I'm gonna recommend you do. And that way you can feel good about yourself. I'm consistently prospecting. I don't have to feel guilty about every for sale by owner I see. I'm consistently working that three or five or 10 or whatever I'm working on, okay? Um, all right, so what are some seller qualifying questions? When you go, go up and you talk to them the first time, like I said, just make it light and breezy, just interested in your house not interested in listing your property, that sort of thing. Um, but there are some good questions you can start asking. So here's a couple of them. When you're talking about their motivations, one good question to ask is, why did you decide to sell yourself rather than list with a real estate agent? It's, it's an easy question to ask. Well, why'd you go for sell by owner? See what they say. And they might say, it's kind of like a trick question because they might say, well, I hate realtors. Oh, I'm so sorry you hate me. Oh, I don't mean you. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I, I'd be kind of funny about it with them until they, they start opening up a little bit. But why, why did you sell to yourself? And, and hearing what they say could absolutely determine how you want to talk to them, all right? Uh, how long are you going to try to sell it on your own? Good question to ask. Because they say, oh, well, you know, we've been on the market two weeks. We want to try it for a couple more. Um, but yeah, if we don't sell it by the end of September, we, we're going to have to list with a realtor. Or one thing I, I used to hear a lot was, well, I'm going to try it till the end of the month, but my wife says if we're not sold by the end of the month, then we got to list with a realtor. Okay. So a lot of times they will just tell you their timeline. And most people do have a timeline in their head that I'm going to try this for a certain amount of time, and then I'm going to try a realtor. So if you can ask that, just, just ask them straight up, how long are you going to try it on your own for? Again, try to be encouraging about, man, yeah, it's a good market. I think you can sell it by yourself. I think you can. But if it, if it, doesn't, if it doesn't work, how long do you think you're going to try it by owner? You know? Ask it however it works for you. What happens if your home doesn't sell? What would you, what would you do? Well, if my house doesn't sell, I can't buy the new one we're building. I don't know. You know? Find out what the motivation is by selling in general. Uh, then you can simply... Another way to prospect listings for sale by owners is to prospect them as buyers. So have you found a home that you're moving into? I know you're selling by owner, but maybe I could help you find a new house. Well, no, we're, we're gonna be moving to Los Angeles. I'm sorry, but no. Um, but just say, okay, well, um, you know, I have some contacts out in Los Angeles through the White Group Network, and I'd be happy to set up a referral for you. Okay, you can do something like that. Um, just go after them that way. Um, and then the big thing we 
uh, big question to ask is on marketing, okay? Because a for sale by owner cannot really market the same way you can. Um, and they think they can now with Zillow and things like that, and, and they can. But uh, some, good, some good ways to market there are, um, there are some questions to ask. How are you attempting to attract buyers? What are you doing to attract buyers? What are you doing? What do you think they're gonna say to that? Put it online. I'll put it online, put, put it on, on Zillow. Facebook. Put it on my Facebook account, yeah. What else did you do? Well, I put a sign in the yard, okay, all right. All right. Then you can ask him, what are your pricing and financing terms? What do you mean? Well, somebody comes to you with an offer, are you just gonna accept it or do you have other financing terms that you need to take a look at? And what do you mean by that? Well, would you consider a VA loan? Would you consider an FHA loan? You know, you can start talking about some of the financing stuff. And they may be very savvy about that, or they may not. And if they're not, it opens the door. Like, oh man, I didn't even think about that. Um, how did you arrive at your price? That's a fun one. How, you, so you, you priced there at 363, how'd you come to that price? Well, my neighbor next door just stole his house for 363. Oh, you mean that one that's 2,000 square feet more than yours? Oh, yeah, okay. You know, but and some, again, these days they're more accurate than they used to be. Um, but still, how did you arrive at their price? And sometimes you will hear, well, I looked at my tax value and I used that. What? I looked at my Zestimate and I used that. What? So just finding out how they came to that price and just say, well, again, you're encouraging them. So I'm not gonna say, what did you do? You know, I'm not gonna say that, but I'm gonna say, okay, well, that's one indicator of price, but there's really a whole lot more. I might start getting into my PTA ideas and just, I'm not saying I'm gonna do it for them. I'm just kind of talking about what I might do to help price a house, all right? So how did you arrive at that price? Um, looking at your marketing results is a good one. I, I mean, I like to ask them, have you done any open houses? And most of the time, no. Have you considered doing an open house? Well, I thought about it, but I didn't, I didn't really like strangers coming into my house. What? They say that stuff. You're like, well, what, what do you mean? Well, if we do an open house and I don't really know who's coming into my house, and then you just have to kind of, as kindly as possible, say, well, if somebody calls you up and says they want to come see your house, what's the difference? Well, I don't think about that. Yeah, I mean, one of the benefits of working with a real estate agent is that at least we, we have licensed people that have background checks on them and we know who they are. When they enter a lockbox, it tells us who they are, when exactly they enter the box. So at least we have some security level when they, when they come into the house. Uh, and by the way, how are you handling your showings? What do you mean? Well, what, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm an engineer. Okay. So when do you work? Oh, pretty much seven to six every day. When are you showing your house? Well, 6.30 or on the weekends. Okay, you know, again, as a, as a realtor, we can have that box open when you're not here. So A, saves you some hassle, but B, we can make it more available to more buyers for you. It's a lot easier. So start talking about some of those logistical things. Um, it is just a fact that scare tactics sell it works when they when they show security commercials ADT commercials they don't show the family sitting on the couch and nothing happening right they show the family sitting on the couch and somebody about to break in and cause harm and then the system interjects and stops the guy right that's what they show scare tactics right same thing here they, they honestly they really should be scared because if I was someone of bad intent I could do a lot of things that was that one person, right? I mean, it's so easy. You just walk up and they're gonna welcome you right in the house and take you right to their basement. And, uh, what are you doing? So as nicely and kindly as possible, just make them think about that. Think about the criminal aspects that are out there. I don't know, I'm not saying that's gonna happen. I'm just surprised it doesn't happen more often is all I'm saying. Um, so make, making sure they understand the, the issues that they're putting, they're bringing in complete strangers into their house. And at least with working with a realtor, we have licensed people that have background checks that we know who it is. Okay? And they're not there. Huh? And they're not there. <laughs> and they're not there. Because my gun show in Cisco isn't there, but I am by myself. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> making you rethink the show. Would the question be, how do you qualify the buyers and people who Absolutely. Absolutely. How are you qualifying your buyers? Well, what do you mean? I mean sometimes they're, they're pretty savvy. Like, well, we'll get, a, we'll get a qualification letter. Who are the lenders that you trust? What do you mean? Well, there's some lenders that, you know, I think they'll just give out a letter to anybody with a, with a breath. So you gotta be aware of that stuff. So asking them how many prospects have you had? How many showings have you had? Um, were any of them financially and emotionally ready to buy? You know, um, have you had any offers? When you followed up, what was their response? Well, what do you mean? I didn't, I didn't follow up with anybody. I haven't talked to anybody that has come here. Oh, and again, I'm gonna to try to encourage them. So I'm gonna say, well, go ahead, follow up with them. I, that's, that's what I would do as your agent. So you have all these people that have come and saw your house, follow up with them today. Find out what, what's going on with them. Uh, okay, like they're not gonna to wanna to do that, right? But again, you're trying to make the point, here's what you can do. I've had even the, the FISBO, they're like, well, I don't want to come across as pushy that I really want to sell. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to like reach out to the buyer to see if they're really interested. Yeah, you're right. And so as kindly as possible, we said, well, one of the things I've learned in selling houses is you got to ask them if they want to buy it, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, take that attitude of trying, I'm trying to help. Yeah. I'm trying to teach you everything I know. Because again, most of the time they won't do it. And all you're really doing is showing them what you are willing to do. Um, okay, and back to the open house thing. So, oh, we haven't really done open house. Oh, that's something I love to do. I recommend you do an open house. Here's how you can do it. Show them what you do to do open houses. Again, they're not gonna do it. And if they do, wonderful, good for them. Here's what I do to do an open house. Take them through the whole process. All it's really doing is a mini presentation and they're like, wow, I don't wanna do all that. Well, that's what I do for my clients. So that's, that's my recommendation for what you can do. All right, and here's a, a, a more pointed question to ask, but I like it. If your buyer had a home to sell and uh, they were listing with a for sale by owner, how would you feel about that? So in other words, your buyer is interested in buying your house. They have to sell their house first. Would you want them to be listed by a for sale by owner or would you want them to be listed with a realtor? And I honestly think the vast majority, 90 plus percent, would say, well, I want them to be with a realtor. Oh, why? And it's just making them think, oh, well, shoot, maybe I should be with a realtor, you know? So it's, a, it's an interesting question. You can bring it up at the right time, with the right person, you know? But it's a good one to think about. So like we said, we wanna get into the house, I'm gonna do a little tour, kind of a mini step one of the listing presentation with them. All right, and then, like I said, my recommendation would be to follow up with them weekly, if not more than that, depending on what's going on. If you're getting a, a hint that they're getting done with this and they're about ready to list, I would start following up with them twice a week. Okay, and I do recommend going in person, and there's two reasons why. The main reason you're gonna get that listing is you're building rapport. So if they're learning to trust you, to like you, you're befriending them, they're much more likely to list with you. And that's really hard to do on the phone with somebody you've really not met before. You can do it, but it's hard. In person, it's a lot easier, right? They get to see that you're nice and you're trying to help, that sort of thing. And then the second reason is that you can drop something off. So again, we're trying to help them through this whole process. So you can drop something off to them, give them something physically that they could use. So I've got a list that I, I could email everybody, uh, just a quick little list of 10 things that you could give them. But what I recommend you do is you can take that list and then tweak it, make it your own, but come up with the things that you wanna give your for sale by owners and print them all out and put them in a little file cabinet or something in your car, a little plastic Walmart file cabinet or something. Put them in your car and just list them one through 10. And you have a little checklist on your phone or on a piece of paper, just saying, here's my three for sale by owners. And then, hey, I'm on week three with so-and-so and I reach in my trunk and I grab week three. I already know what it is and hand it to them. So what, what should some of those things be? What can they be? 
A marketing report? Yeah, that's probably too much info to give them. Property disclosure. Property disclosure. North Carolina property disclosure statement. For sale by owners have to fill it out as well, right? It's a state form. It's not a realtor form. That's a state form. So a lot of times they don't know that. So simply bringing them a property disclosure statement. And it would go something like this. So, hey, uh, hey Joe, how's, how's it going? How's, uh, how's the showings going? Oh, not so good. I had one, one guy come through. Oh, yeah, have you followed up with him? No, I haven't followed up. Oh, I recommend you follow up, man. That's, that's how I get some sales. Recommend you follow up with him. Uh, but hey, I was just trying to kind of driving through the area and um, thought about you and I wanted to give you this North Carolina property disclosure statement. Uh, it's, a, it's a state form. I don't know if you know about this. No, I've heard about it, but I haven't used one before. Okay, well, I just thought I'd bring one by for you that you can use. It's a state requirement. So we'll try to help you out here and, and just get that to you. It's something you can look at. When, when your buyer makes an offer, you're, you're gonna need to give this to them as, as a disclosure of what you know about the property. And it's got all the instructions right there on it. Um, but I just, I just thought about you and thought I'd, I'd hand that off to you. Okay, well, thanks, Aaron. Uh, yeah, no problem, man. If you need anything this week, just give me a call. I'm happy to help you out in any way I can. That's it, that's all it's gotta be. Next week, we drop by. What else can we give them? I like that home warranty. Uh, a home warranty, yeah, good idea. Bring them a home warranty packet. Say, hey, you know, when I, when I work with my sellers, I, I offer a home warranty, it's, it's an option that as a seller, you can, you can list your house for free um, and have coverage. Uh, I'm not a home warranty salesperson, so I don't care if you buy one or not, but I, I just wanna like recommend you maybe give them a call, take a look at this packet. That's uh, something that I give my clients, so I just figured I, I, I'd give it to you as a courtesy. Uh, how's it going this week? What's what's up? Oh, no showings this week. Nothing going on. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you do some open houses, you know. I, I think maybe set one up for this weekend would be a good idea. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Okay, well, you know, if you want me to do an open house for you, I'd be happy to. Just let me know. Uh, no problem. You know, I, I can help you out. Hmm? Yeah, one day, so, so, uh, so you can hand them that that form. Okay. So now let's take a step back. So, how can I do an open house for them if I don't have it listed? One day listing. One day listing, right? Well, I don't want to listen to you. I understand, no problem. But if you want to do it, I'm happy to do an open house for you. Um, but by law, you do have to have a listing agreement to represent a home, right? So I'm gonna sign a listing agreement with them for one day, for that open house day. That is only, you can, you can, I don't care if you even put in there, this is just for anybody who comes to the open house. You know, if they want that language in there, that's fine. Um, but the idea is just like, I don't want to go through all this paperwork, but I have to by law, but you can do a one day listing. I'm not going to put in MLS. I'm not going to do marketing photos. I'm not going to do anything else for you, but just do an open house. Well, why would you do that? Oh, I'm looking for potential buyers. Maybe I can bring a buyer in to sell your house. Maybe they're not interested in your house or in another house. I don't know, but it works for me. It's my job. It's a great way to pick up a listing. You know, if they're interested in doing that. And it's a good deal for you. It is. You can pick up some buyers. Would you ask at that point would they would they be willing to pay a buyer commission? Yeah, yeah. That that should have already been asked, I would assume, by this point. But yeah, they're already saying, Yeah, well we're gonna pay you, you know, three percent, you know, to any buyer's agent. That that should have already been asked by that point. Yeah. And that's not maybe week two is not maybe when I'm bringing that up. That might be four or five or whenever it feels comfortable for them. If you have good open house conversations and they're just like, I just don't want to do it. I might bring it up right away. First visit, maybe, if that conversation went that way. Yeah. <coughs> All right, what else? How about the, in Weikert 1, um, it's actually on our leave behind that we give sellers, our showcasing the home to sell page. Here's some quick tips that I, I got off of our Weikert page that shows you how to showcase your home to sell. There's another one about um, first impressions matter, I think it's called, it's the title. And you can bring that by maybe two weeks later. And here's, here's one that says first impressions matter. It's just something I gave my client this week and I thought about you. And I always like to use the words, I, I was thinking about you, I thought about you. I don't know, maybe that doesn't fit your personality, but it works for me, I like it. it may, I, I, I tend to get a better response from people with that. Oh, you're thinking about me? Oh. Drew, I was thinking about you last night. It was lovely. <laughs> no, not saying that. 
But um, yeah, I, I just was thinking about, and, and you were just thinking about them, right? I don't care if it even your phone bleeped up and said, hey, call Drew. Okay, but I'm not calling you without thinking about you, so I was thinking about you. I was thinking about how much money I'm gonna make off your listing. No. Um, but that, that phrase to me always seems to soften things a bit. I was just thinking about you, thought about you this morning, you know, anything like that. All right, what else can we bring? It's an older house that you believe was built in 1978. You can get them with lead based Yeah, paint good. Disclosure. Good. Lead based paint disclosure. That's a good one. Good. What else? Business card. Business card. Property business card? Property business card. Property business card. You yep. can give them your own business card too, right? right? Which is a good idea. Just simply, you know, the first visit, of course, you should give them your business card. That's really the only thing I'd give them on the first visit. But you could also give them several of your business cards saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking for business. So if you happen to run across a buyer and they're like, hey, I need to find an agent. If you don't mind giving them my card, like that's it. It's non-threatening. It's, it's, it's a way to maybe pick up some business. But to Caleb's point, even better, how about putting together those property business cards for, for them? They're in Wygert One and create a little property business card. It's got their, uh, the, the picture of the home, the address, uh, you put the price on there usually or no? Yeah, price and like top three, three things of the property or something. Three good things about the property right. and then you put your information on the on back, the other right? side, yeah. So you show them, hey, I'm, I'm happy to make these property business cards for you. I've, I've made you 20 here. Um, you can give them out to your potential buyers. It's got your house, your information, but if you didn't want to deal with them and you, you want to hand them over to me or something, here's a, some cards to give them out. It, again, it just shows a little effort. It takes you what? Maybe five minutes to make them? Uh, yeah. Maybe. So that's a great idea. Great idea. Property business cards. Once you do that, how do you get them? Order them and then they come to you? No, you can print them here. Really? Um, just buy the Avery business card sheets and you can print them here. Okay. Good. What else? Um, there's like a hundred million options, right? Um, but how about just our little Wiker? You know, four-page brochure that we have back there that talks about selling with Wiker. Again, that's getting to why you should list with me. So that's not something week one or two or three I'm doing. But after it's been clear, I keep coming back. Yes, I want your listing. Should it become available, then that's a good good one to pass off. Gold services. Hmm? Gold. gold services. Yeah, gold service brochure. There's a good one. There's also the go-to. You know, and, and almost all of those we could keep in our trunk of our car, right? Caleb's property business cards you'd have to print out specifically for them. The other one you'd have to print out specifically for them, which I always think is a good think is a good go-to, is just market information. So here's what listed in your neighborhood this last week. Here's what sold last month. Things like this, giving them some some sold information. I said that you told me. Huh? That was the first thing I said. Okay. Okay. I use that marketing. Yeah, the whole marketing. I'm not going to give them the whole pricing package. No, no. Yeah, no I'm talking about the market. Like, okay. Some stats or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that what so, you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They can go to Sam Tool or anything like yeah. that, print out a graph. Hey, I was thinking about you this week, and here's what's going on in Fletcher right now. There's, you know, here's a you know, price per square foot. You can see the graph. Don't, don't give them everything. Just here's a graph. Here's a thing. Or here's what's sold. Because they don't get the sold prices. The one thing Zillow doesn't have their grubby little hands on is the sold prices of things. So that's the one thing we do have access to that no one else does. Of course, you can go into tax records, but, huh? That's actually a really good um, direct marketing and mail campaign, too, where you could get a lot of listings in that just setting. I'd pick a neighborhood and just mail the piece of foot. You know, these three houses sold in the neighborhood last month, and that will know they sold four years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so yeah, I mean, the idea is just to be bringing something of value, something helpful to them each and every time you visit. And there's nothing that will beat the consistency of dropping by. And so again, if you drop by, there's a good chance you might miss them from time to time, right? So that's again, where you can leave that thing behind. And I don't recommend you have anything printed necessarily, but Maybe have some stationery with you or some just decent paper or something that you can maybe wrap, uh, not like Christmas wrap, but like just 
fold over a piece of paper and put that, you know, whatever you're leaving behind in that and just write on there, hey Joe, sorry I missed you. I was just dropping by to say hello. Um, <clears throat> here's some information about lead-based paint disclosure or something that I, I thought you might be able to utilize. And then stick it on their front door. Don't put it in the mailbox, right? Can't do that. Just stick it on the front door. And then as you're leaving, not while you're sitting there in the driveway, but as you're leaving, then text them. Hopefully you have, you probably have their cell number because the cell number is probably the one on the sign. They might have a home phone, but who, who really has that anymore? So it's probably their cell phone. So you can text them real quick. Hey Joe, I just dropped by your place. I was gonna give you this lead-based paint. I left it on your front door and you're gone. That's it. Now, I don't know if it's 100% right thing to do, but I like texting them as I'm leaving because sometimes I found they were there, they didn't answer the door, <laughs> right? So sometimes that works so they don't feel awkward about being there, you know, like I'm, I'm already gone, I'm out of your hair. But I, I like doing that because not everybody goes in their front door or anybody, right? Does any, any of you go in your front door? Um, so you go in your garage or whatever door, so sometimes you just gotta let them know it's there or they may not see it for a few days or weeks. So. Should you be concerned Concerned about the do not call registry? No. Because yeah, once they put their phone number up there, that opens yeah. it up. Now, if they specifically ask you, don't call me anymore, yeah. well, that's sort of a cease and desist. And like, all right, I'm, I'm done with you. you know? But if they've got their phone number there, yeah. that's not something you need to go check on. The do not no, you don't. Now, it is a gray area because the argument is they don't have their phone number up to be solicited, they have their phone number up there for potential buyers. So I would argue, well, and I'm starting the conversation with, I'm interested in looking at your home. I wanna know what's on the market. That's 100% good to go. We call in for that reason. But your follow-up calls about listing could be borderline, but if we've established some rapport, then we're good to go. If we have some rapport, they're not telling me to not call them, we're good to go. But again, I would rather be stopping by in person anyway. Just if they're not there, sending a quick text message would be my preference, or you could try calling them real quick. But again, we're not trying to be overly intrusive, so I find that a quick text message is better received. Okay. All right. Let's talk about a few things there. All right, so real quick, what are some of the what are, what are the, the advertising or the exposure, exposure that's available to a for sale by owner? What are the, some of the things that they can do as a for sale by owner? A lot more now than it used to be, but what are some of the things that they could do advertising wise? What can they do to expose their house? Online. online, Zillow, right? Facebook ads. Facebook ads, sign in the yard. What else? If you use that physical freedom, they can get it on the MLS. Right, different. Well, okay, all right. Open, uh, they can do a, a you know, list, limited service, whatever. Uh, open house, open, they can do open houses, right? Um, they, they can network their sphere of influence usually through social media these days, right? Anything else? That's all I have listed. That's about all they can do, right? Now, what are, what are some things that, that we can do that they can't do? about it. I hope we have an answer to this. We got access to oh, all of the realtors too. We can send out okay. emails to all the realtors. Okay, we can we can we can talk to other realtors. We can talk to them through access blast emails. Network. We can talk to them through sales meetings, the MLS. communications in there. The and MLS, <clears throat> right? And that's why so, we all should shoot limited Sam's service people. No, I, I didn't say that. Okay. Oh. Oh. He got his on the MLS, so he's through that. It's on there. That would be a limited service thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, th but we're not. That's that's a hybrid of for sale by owner okay. you know, sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, we can get them in the MLS. What else can we do? Show their home. We can. Over, the showings are a lot easier. Yeah. I was gonna say bring vetted buyers. Okay. Yeah, we can vet the buyers easier. We have more experience with that. Uh, what else? Okay, I'm talking about advertising. Oh, just 
How about just open houses in general? So I'm not talking about their open house. What about every other open house? So networking things back and forth. I have a buyer. Oh, it doesn't work for that house, but it might work for yours, right? So networking all that stuff back and forth. We have an office that's answering sign calls all the time, an office that's answering internet inquiries, uh, Facebook inquir inquiries, by like listing that one house in Governor's View, the Facebook ad that we automatically put out. This morning, I've gotten seven leads from that. That You guys might want to take them because I haven't even seen them yet. But I mean, the most late Facebook ads that we have come out, like that stuff that, boom, we have automatically going out that we can, maybe those buyers won't buy Governor's View, but they might buy something else, right? So it's just that constant networking back and forth. Um, the sphere of influence of not just ourselves, but every agent in our office, right? Um, broker tours, meetings, things like that. Flyers, brochures, just listed postcards, uh, that sort of thing, calling the neighborhood, knocking on doors. I, I, I'm sure some for sale by owner has done it, but I've never heard of one knocking on doors in the neighborhood that a lot of people know that they're for sale by owner. They should, it's probably the best thing they could do, right? But doing that that sort of thing all right so there's a lot of things that we can do above and beyond uh, what they do i mean even things like handling professional photography sometimes is easier for us because we have the connections uh using matterport you know, it's a five thousand dollar system that that we can use for a hundred dollars um, that would cost them probably 400 or more to hire someone to come out and do so things like that right so again, with for sale by owner prospecting, you kind of sum it up. Again, you gotta remember it's a courting relationship. It's a long-term process. And you've gotta work with more than one at a time, I would recommend, so you kind of keep, keep on your toes. But get a certain number of them that you consistently work until they list or they die. One of the two, right? So consistently work with them that way. And then always talking to them weekly and just constantly encouraging them, constantly being their friend. And by the way, if you do this well, you'll be amazed how much business you pick up off the people that do sell the house themselves. Think about it. Your whole job is to learn, get to know more people, build your sphere of influence. So what if you befriend someone, you help them out, and all of a sudden they sell their house because of an open house idea you gave them. Oh, shucks, I didn't make any money off of that. So? You just have a new friend in the real estate business. They love you because you've supported them, you've helped them then I can go to them. I've earned the right to ask for a referral, have I not? Say, hey Joe, man, I'm so happy for you. You got this thing under contract. If you need anything in the contract stage, just let me know, I'm here to help. Uh, as you know, man, I've been busting my butt trying to get you to listen to me for two months. I'm glad you got it sold on your own, that's wonderful. Uh, but you see the kind of work I do. So of all your friends and family, who do you think is gonna be selling next? Who can you refer me to? Ask, you've earned the right. And if that, if that relationship's as good as we're making that out to be here, they're gonna be happy to do that, you know? Or again, maybe working with, the, working with them as a buyer's agent on something else. But you've earned a new friend in the real estate business. So even when it doesn't work out, if you keep that going, you keep the follow-up happening, you got a friend. A referral friend, okay? So that's how I would recommend for sale by owner prospecting. Any other comments, questions? No? Okay. I like that last one. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, we'll stop with that then.